Irish Media Network. We entertain. I'm Arvine, and you're very welcome to Decades of Dance Music Quiz, where we test the contestants' knowledge of music history from the last 10 decades or 100 years. No one said it was going to be easy. And you're tuned to the Irish Media Network via YouTube and Facebook Live. Good evening, people. I'm feeling good on day 40 of my own personal lockdown. The sun is gone, but the quiz must go on. We're at the second last round of competition before we get to the last 16. Shout out to all the friends, family, and fanatics, religious or not, who've been tuning in. Big up to Laura Whitmore, too, for bringing home the bacon in our last round. It was a tight call between her and the greatest hair in entertainment, Andy <laughs> Goldstein. What a bar Barnett. He has to come back. Owen, can we get him back? I think we're going to have to bring back Andy for the finals, all right, for sure. No, I will try. We're going to have to make a few calls. So tonight, we've got a biggie tonight. We are single-handedly reuniting two lads who are former members of two bands twice together. And we have a mad Irish school teacher with an English accent. Yes, yes, yes. It's decades of dancing. We've got some boys lined up here. First up, we have the school teacher, punk rock joke telling man machine himself, also known as Lee Fester. He's the key <laughs> open and dad joke specialist from British punk rock legend Snuff. Their album, Potatoes and Melons, Wholesale prices straight from the lockup is one of the strangest album titles of the 90s. People who know this man know his taste in 60s shirts. Come into view before you even know he's in the room. He's a proper <laughs> Irish man with an English accent, hailing from South London. He's a father of two that we know of. His, <laughs> his name sounds like he's a darts player. It's funny bastard, an all-round legend, Lee the Mod Murphy. <laughs> oh, Lee. that was the most beautiful intro ever. Thank you. <laughs> Lee, <laughs> have you noticed any strange behavior in your area? Uh, it could be by your wife or your neighbors. And also, what's, what's the worst reaction to a joke you've ever had? And finally, can you tell us a joke you might tell on stage at a snuff gig? And wait for it in your best Irish accent of all time. Yeah, yes, yes, you don't know about that, no. Because the only jokes I got, that that's way now over there, I can't do it at all. It's uh, that on TV over there, he told me all the best jokes I know. He sent me to me a couple of years ago now. Should I stop? <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> all right. So, uh, what's, uh, uh, I know. <laughs> uh, what's the best thing about having sex? Uh, in a, a, on a campsite. <laughs> Don't know. Andy, what's the answer to that there now, Andy? Why? I, I know this one. I think I, I told you this one. You did? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the only joke I managed at a snuff gig. And it, it sent me a whole load. And everyone that I told... Oh, I don't know. Punch lines. What? Oh, you got better ones. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know the fucking joke. Oh, it was that it? <laughs> now, Andy did the punchline. You're too far away. <laughs> <laughs> what was the punchline? Yeah. Uh, that's that's my Irish done for you. Awesome, See, it's brother. a cork thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I struggle. I'll call you later. <laughs> uh, so, you're doing the cork thing. I don't try to move my top lip at all. <laughs> I don't move the top lip. That's why I got the tash on to go on home. <laughs> All right, Lee. Like, like we're going to put you down for a second there, mate. We're going to put you down. Pipe down, pipe down. Good man. Uh, right, next up, Lee's strange behaviour side here. Next up, we have a legend of the rock world. He once washed dishes in a French restaurant in Kent Kentish Town. Landed that job as the previous incum incumbent. Hit number one in the UK charts. That was former DOD contestant Adamski. I wonder who took that job after our lad here left to make number ones himself. Rumour has it, Liam Howler from The Project, he was up next who then handed the dishcloth over to Chris Martin, who handed it to Ed Sheeran. The musical dishcloth of power is now lost to the shite music gods forever. I digress. This Durham legend, which is the bars between Sunderland and Newcastle, for anyone asking, started off in a band called The Edge. When they, when, when they fell over the edge, he was then in the, in the Contenders, when he rocked a, where he rocked a black boiler suit with Contenders written down the side of it. When White. The oh? White. A white boiler suit, white boiler suit, I digress, I digress. White boiler suit with contenders written down the side of it. When the contenders were contenders no more, he formed Whirlpool. When Whirlpool pulled the plug and drained, he started heavy stereo and signed to legendary creation, the legendary creation records. The rest, as they say, is history. He joined Oasis, started BDI and with our, with our next guest and now sails in the good ship High Flying Birds with Noel. It's Gem, not Gem, Archer. How are you, man? 
Have you seen any funny joggers in your neighborhood? And how do you make the perfect chip in this lockdown madness? Not at the same time. <laughs> Joking. <Sure. laughs> I mean, you would get a lot of distance, wouldn't you, if you were running around with a, with a, a flaming chip pan? <laughs> so are you, are you going to give us the, the, the lowdown on these absolutely ridiculously good chips? Because I've been hearing stories. I told you all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's I'm, keep this between me and you. And I'm, now, I'm, I'm, so I'm you're, maybe... you're making 15 different kinds of curry. <laughs> yeah. point. After four... That was just this morning game as well. <laughs> All right, cool. You I, I, chips and curry, half chips, half rice. Chips and curry is a legendary Irish dish. I'll hear you say. Like when I, I, had, I had chips with curry sauce last night. Sorry to butt in there. Yeah, hey. pipe down there. You're next. Big you're next. Pipe I'm down a, there, big shot. You're I'm next. A, Andy's like the gun that just keeps going off in your pocket. He just doesn't know when to stop, does he? There. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gam, you're good anyway. I am. Good man, good man. Right, well, well, let's move on before we just we just end up having a banter session here, which we will do in a minute. Um, so, uh, finally, is an Arsenal fan who has been known to DJ outside a pie and mash shop before their games. He once went toe to toe drinking absent with the ghoulish rocker Marilyn Manson. What a pair <laughs> they would have made. He's a guitarist in Oxford Shoegaze Geezer's Ride, but also rode the stallion of the world alongside Game and Oasis and BDI. He's a DJ, a producer. And now a school teacher at home with his kids. He's not the <laughs> singer from synth pop duo Erasure, but I wonder would Erasure fans ever rock up to yes. Andy Belgates thinking he's him? I would say so, yeah. He's the butcher of round one, brought back from the dead by his mate Gam Archer. It's Andy, Andy Ding Dong Bell. Andy, how are you? Have you been eating anything you wouldn't feed a dog lately? And what's the funniest thing that's happened to you while teaching your kids? I wouldn't. At home? I wouldn't feed chips and curry sauce to a dog only because i want them all myself um and what was the second question what's the funniest thing that's happened to you while teaching the kids at home the uh the inevitable um kind of you know abandonment of all school lessons apart from pe has been the main the main the main thing we had about six hours of pe today and nothing else <laughs> and uh, and who's who won the PE? Is it a competition or is it just like for cracks? Um, it, it's basically just football, and <laughs> it's the, you know it, it, the uh, the rule of dads is that you can never win the game, so I always lose against the kids. And how's the and, you know as as a school, as a home teacher, like are you find yourself swearing a lot at the kids, or is it like on lockdown, or do you find yourself in a situation yeah. where you're just going? The, the kids are going to go back to school with a with a real good um, education in. Uh, Top class swearing, that's for sure. <laughs> that's what we like to hear, bringing the Irish heritage in. Uh, Liam Otto will, will attest to that one down there. Is that right, Lee? A lot of the Irish words are not swearing, are they, apparently? <laughs> well, it's just part of, li part of life. It's part of life, yeah. mate. It's part of life, you know? Yeah. But, um, okay, so... for an e, don't you? <laughs> you just so swap answer in and you're not swearing. Yeah. <laughs> so Andy's our final guest tonight. I'm going to hand things over to our quiz wizard. Owen, who's going to give you a quick run through of the, the way we run the show for those who don't know what's going on. And there's a lot of you tuning in tonight from all over the world. We'll talk about that in a minute. Owen. Hey, Arvind. So, yeah, for everybody watching at home, if you don't, haven't played along yet, there's three contestants. They're going to ask 10 questions by Arvind. I've got their numbers here. So, they're going to send in their answers into me on WhatsApp every time Arvind calls it a question. We'll tell you the answers and the scores after the 10 questions have been called out. So, you guys can play along at home. Everybody who's watching there on YouTube, we can see you playing. And everybody's on Facebook, we can see you playing. So, if you put in your answers at the same time, Arvind will call out a winner from the public at the end as well. So, pretty simple. Three contestants. 10 questions we'll call out the winner and the answers at the end so may the best person win sweet. good luck chat. sweet <laughs> good luck andy andy you ready yes lee the mod murphy are you ready i'm ready game archer of the archer tribe are you oh, ready he's ready Okay, just before we start, we have a lot of people tuning in from all over the world. We've got Shara Bell, Gam Oppa, Andy Lover, HJ, Shane, Alan Fitzpatrick, Sean LGX, Jarvia, River Dead in the blah, 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 Andy Lover, Shane, blah, blah, blah. And there's loads of them, actually. There's two. Roisin Padiachi's in the house. Big love to Roisin. Um, yeah. 
So there's a lot of people tuning in tonight. So yeah, so round one, Hi, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna kick off with the first question. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. On that phone now. <laughs> we're good, we're yes. good. Okay, so episode 14, question one. Gene Vince Gene Vincent's smash hit song, Bebop Alula, was released in which year? Closest to the year wins. Gene Vincent's smash hit song, Bebop Alula, was released in which year? I, I think I've got that wrong. No, Andy, you're on the money. Hey! Lee is on the money, and Gam, you're a year off, I'm afraid. Yeah. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Lee was there in in the year it came out. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> so we got all the answers in, Irvin. Yeah, don't forget if you're tuning in and watching us wherever you are in the world right now, you can fire in the answers. Uh, there's the, on, in the comment sections on Facebook or YouTube, and we'll read them out. And if you've got any questions for our crew tonight. You want to ask them something? We're obviously going to filter them, but fire them away. We may ask one or two of them, <laughs> especially if they're really funny and take the piss out of people. Um, my question number: all answers are in, so we're going to move on to the next question. Where did the term "mod" originate? Where? Where? We'll take a decade. Where? You just said the what? Where? where? I'll take a decade. <laughs> what decade? Or when? At what place? Yeah. Either either, if you can get if, like Gem's got in an answer in there. Yeah, but you know, you know, he's like where and when. Yeah, we're... <laughs> it's like in his garden yesterday. You want <laughs> and where? Where where and when did the term mod originate? We'll accept a time period and a place. Oh, um uh, you know, or even a descriptive, you know. Sorry, my type is terrible. Uh, Motion Pradiachi is loving your face, by the way. So, Cam, you're on the money there. Shouts to Christine tuning in from NYC. Cam knows it. Cam knows it. <laughs> Did I send mine in? Yeah. Yeah, you got the right answer as well, Lee. I'm thinking I might have got the wrong answer then because you know what you're talking about. Yeah, that would be what I was talking about you. Okay, all answers in, Irvin. You can move all on. All answers in. We've got we've got some people firing in questions. Jane Connors, uh, Kat Ludlow, Kat Ludlow, wife of Lee Mod. She's tuning in in the other room. I'm, I'm no doubt, you know. Um, I actually just heard a whoop downstairs because I got one right because she thought he ain't getting anything that. Point. What happens if you get if you, if you get a few wrong tonight, Lee? What's going to happen to you after the show? That's what I'm wondering. It might, it might actually go better for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the sympathy, the sympathy. I, I always tend to go that way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question number three: Who was Herbie Hancock's mentor? 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 Don't it's quiet, doesn't it? Everyone's thinking. It's quiet. It's because everyone's thinking. Yeah. It's like ding, 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 now, to all our, yeah, all the answers are in there, Irvine. Mean. To all our Korean friends tuning in. Um, are you, are you giving any hint for who got it right there? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Andy's lover has got it wrong. Andy's lover is not his wife. It's someone called Andy Lover who's, like, tuning in. <laughs> Good time. Oh, Andy's got lockdown, Andy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Andy's got a lover in lockdown, like a virtual YouTube lover. <laughs> Uh, you, that sounds like a name for one of your bands, Gam, that you're work, doing the artwork for, YouTube lover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to you break the news now? <laughs> <laughs> Gam started a new band. He's you keeping know, mum. Yeah, you know, <laughs> flat or fingered. Yeah, go on, tell us about the new, the, 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 the artwork, Gam. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, it's my girlfriend's alter ego band of her youth and her mate. Yeah, man. So I just did, a, I mean, you know, they've got to make the music, but I've already made the sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> well, the important stuff is done then, yeah. Yeah. 
Andy, that that's sounds basically like, a... like every band I was ever in. <laughs> <laughs> Cat flap. Cat flap is your wife's band, is it, Lee? Well, <laughs> cat flap, cat flap. <laughs> right, okay, we're we're digressing here into into banter beyond the uh, the realms of fandom and and interest. So, the question number four: How many Billboard number ones does Elvis Presley have? Closest answer wins. How many Billboard number ones does Elvis Presley have? Um. <laughs> Oh, Christ. Thirty aces. Gally Bebop has asked a question here for Gam. Gam, do you have any plans to change your hairstyle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go. That was in real time. <laughs> and it, So we've got another question. I don't know if it's a question more a comment from Gam Oppa. Why wasn't I born in English? I don't know. I always ask myself that too. Why wasn't I born in Irish? <laughs> Game won the points in that round there, RV, and you can Game move on. Owning it. Got loads of answers coming in from Johnny Quinn, Shane, uh, Sarah, Sarah, EQ, Audio, Shara Bell firing it in, A, Andy Lovers, not really got an answer there. Raman's in yeah, here. We've got Raman. Raman has tuned in. Raman's tuned in with the wrong answer. Um, okay. <laughs> How many built more number ones that Elvis Presley have? Closest answer wins. We'll move on to the next question. Name one leading music artist who has won an Oscar for music. Name one leading music artist who has won an Oscar for music. Can I say the same name every time? You can say any name you want, mate. This might not be right. Gem's in there with the right answer. (laughs) Yeah, Lee's in there with the right answer. (laughs) So many to choose from. It is such a, it is, there's a small enough list when you think about it. There's only like 15, 16 when you actually That's small. think about, yeah, over 100 years of people, of, of big music artists who've actually written and won an Oscar on their own. Andy oh, takes a bit longer to answer because he's actually looking in the encyclopedia of <laughs> no, Britannica. No, 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 <laughs> a word of screens here. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the wrong answer. Cool. You can move on to the next round, and Arvin. We've got the okay, answer soon. There's a quick question here for you guys. I want these thick and I want these fast so it's for Andy and Gam what's your favorite Oasis artwork sleeve oh whatever whatever seriously which whatever. one is that the blue sky one yeah it's just it's it's so it's quite it's you know I wouldn't say ride-esque but it's very minimal I like the um the John Lennon house one is that live forever I don't know yeah <laughs> John Lennon's childhood house, I think it is. Like Mimi's house, is it? Okay, cool. Great, lads. Well, that, there you go. There you have the answers right there. And Archer Hard G says, you are looking very, very handsome, Gam, with a couple <laughs> of crying faces. It's the truth. I, 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 it is the truth. Okay, next question. Um, <laughs> name one leading artist. Oh, we've got that one. Next question is, in 1935, a company introduced several new guitar models including the Model B electric Spanish guitar, which is the first known solid body electric guitar. What was the name of that guitar company? The first solid body electric. In 1935, a company introduced several new guitar models, including the Model B electric Spanish guitar, which is the first known solid body electric guitar. What was the name of the guitar company? Well, if Gem and Andy get this wrong, they're, they're going to hang their heads. <laughs> they, used by, they were used by some of the biggest music artists in the history of music, put it that way. I think I'm probably going to get it. You know, I don't think I'm going to get this right, you know. I've definitely got it wrong already. <laughs> were they used by the Wurzels? It's not about the, the result. It's about taking part in it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I'm already coming. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Three questions to go. So it's already. So yeah, we got all the answers in there, Irving. All the answers in. Um, I have a quick, quick question from the public there. Um, guys, what do you usually enjoy doing during the lockdown period? And you can only answer it one word. Andy. Drinking. Lee. Eight. Again. There you go. There you got it. You got it in one there. Right, wicked. On to the next question. Um, who has won more Grammys? Herbie Hancock or Carlos Santana? Who's won more Grammys, 
Herbie Hancock or Carlos Santana? Hmm. Sharon Murphy. This is killing me. Sharon Murphy has just commented, Lee, is this the only way I can see you? <laughs> That's my <laughs> sister. That's your sister. We've been practicing performance for three weeks and we haven't spoke yet. We each other and the other one doesn't pick up. It's, like, it's, it's proper distancing, you know. We're doing well. Doing good. <laughs> Got loads of answers firing in from the public here. Hang on. So yes, Sharon. <laughs> Right. So there's another, another question That's here from somebody in Korea. Gam, one day will you do your own music? I believe Gam has been doing his own music for his whole, entire life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's an offshoot going at the minute. Yeah, tell us. You have to ask them to underneath your chin. Oh. <laughs> Okay, which are you talking about? The two guys literally in the room here, or the two guys on the screen? <laughs> Me and this guy, that one over there. Yeah. A super, a, a super, a super trio going on. Stupid. It's a super, it's a super group. Yeah. <laughs> Defiance Appreciation Society. <laughs> Why Andy Goldstein isn't here? Uh, Goldstein yeah. should be here, man. Goldstein should be here. He's already, he's already asserted leadership. The steam, the steam. He wants things to run by him and things. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, okay. <laughs> not, COVID. Um, not the flaming chip pan either. <laughs> Janet Murphy is now in the house. This is oh, my try. It's the whole family, isn't it? Go, go, Lee. The whole Murphy planet is taking over the fucking oh, the comment see? section here. It's it's the Murphys versus Korea. <laughs> they, they obviously, the only way Lee's going to get a question is if we throw one in there. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> all right, the next question. All the answers are in for that last one. So the next question we have is El Morocco and the Apollo Theater are famous nightclubs of which decade? El Morocco. And, a and the Apollo Theatre are famous famous nightclubs of which decade? That is, I have no idea what that is. They're, you mean their peak? Or which decade? Yeah. yeah when peak. they started. When they started. Yeah, when not, they started. When they were, not when they were built, Ken. <laughs> no, <not one. laughs> it's a good, it's, a, it's an interesting question because I have no idea what the answer is. <laughs> Is it when they were hot and groovy? That's what Gem's asking, isn't it? Potentially, yeah. I'm going to send it, then I'm going to ask you what the question is. Okay. <laughs> Go, Gem. Them two theatres, when were they built? Is that it? Echo, Rock, Echo El Morocco and Apollo Theatre are famous nightclubs of which decade? So the decade that they were big in. Decade they were big in? Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So, you know, the music, the music spans from 1920s to 2020, so... You, you know, you, there's only... Um, right, my world. 1910. <laughs> <laughs> here, so there's a few people... Fight. There's a lot of love going on here for Gam Archer in here. I have to say, Gam, K. Hayon get, says, G You are so cute, Gam. And Andy, I'm crying. I can make the <laughs> sea out of my tears. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the letter thing. The letter thing. Exactly. <laughs> I'm loving it, man. Absolutely loving it. You look so beautiful when you smile. I'm not sure who that's at. I'm sure that's probably for for Lee and Maud. I think that's for you, Av. It's probably one of the. It's probably one of the Murphys. It's probably one of the Murphys <laughs> attacking the competition again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got, <laughs> I've got Uncle. My Uncle Sean has tuned in. Apparently, hi, Uncle Sean. And I'm my cousin Tara. I've tuned in. Oh Jesus! Right. Um, they they were feeling sorry for you now, Av. Jane Connors is saying, Gam sounds a bit like Nathan Carter. I don't even know who Nathan Carter is. No, you know him, he sounds like Gam. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Question number <laughs> nine. I bet you look good on the dance floor. It was the debut hit single by which band? I bet you look good on the dance floor. It was a debut single by which band? Bonus point if you can name the date and year. 
and month. Oh my god, I've just had a, <laughs> just had a proper blank. My kids will kill yeah. me. Jam and Andy in there with the correct answer, just to put pressure on you there, Lee. Yeah, it's Gam. <laughs> Gam, it's Gam, isn't it? <laughs> um, oh, the Arctic I know. flunkies. The Arctic. Thank you. <laughs> the, hey. The year. You did say, so we've got to put a year in there. You get an extra point for a year. Uh, a point for the year. Oh, a year, not a decade. Okay, well, so. The closest gonna... to the year, I'll get an extra point. I'm going to have a guess. Okay, I'll try that. Oh, hang on. I've sent that to Kath. Cam <laughs> <laughs> is eyeballing the wall care. there. Cam is eyeballing care. the wall there. I don't know why he was eyeballing. Can I just tell you the answer? Cam <laughs> is like this. Cat's like. Probably hasn't seen a ghost. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah. No. Shower Bell is saying this is a shambles. <laughs> so, okay. All the answers in, Arvind. Loads of people answering from the public here and getting it completely off the mark. Um, they're like literally ten years out of, out of, uh, out of time. Right. Next question, which is the final question of this evening. Before we do that, um, Lee, would you fancy yeah. doing your action man impersonation for us? Because obviously, Lee. Lee has actually got another job, apart from being a school teacher and a punk rock guitarist, I've been training joker, always. synth player. He does a great impersonation of Action Man. Take it away, Lee. <laughs> Yay. Very good, Lee. <laughs> nice shirt as well, by the way, Lee. Right, final question, final question. And this is, a, like, if you don't get this question, I'm actually going to break quarantine and come around to your gaffs and actually beat the shite out of you because, like, it's not fucking easy. Um, I hurt myself today to see if I still feel our lyrics by which artist. I hurt myself today. Oh, to I know what it is. If I, still, I think Andy knows the answer. I, think I hurt myself today to see if I still feel our lyrics by which artist. Who wrote it? Yeah, the artist who performed it. Oh, wrote performed it. it. Okay. Yeah. Who, who drew it? <laughs> <laughs> what from the hole in the wall? I hurt myself today to see if I still feel the lyrics by which artist. Okay, I'm in there with the correct answer. Same with Andy. Boom. And Lee, wow. Um, all the answers in there. Lee probably said Spice Girls, did he? I, I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Spice. I love Gary him. Spice. Spice Lardo. <laughs> Gary Cinnamon. Gary Cinnamon. <laughs> right. That concludes the final <laughs> round. Um, there's a lot of people firing in answers here. Um, Andy EQ Audio Systems has got it right. Uh, Robert Cree has got it wrong, mate. Um, Char Bell's got it right. Darren McCormick's got it right. Andy Lover. I don't even think you've answered it, mate. Um, yeah, loads of really good answers in here. Thanks for everyone for firing and their answers. Now, we're going to have a quick run through the questions, and Owen's going to tell me. I'm going to have a stab at them, and we're going to find out who was right and who was wrong. Gene Vincent's smash hit song, Bebop Aluba, was released in which year? Close to the year wins. I'm going to say 1952 because it's a 50s classic. So, this is 1956, and it's one of the first examples of rockabilly music. So, you got Andy and Lee both correct here, and Gim was Thank incorrect. You, Andy. <laughs> good, good lads. Right, next question is where did the term mod originate? I'm assuming it originated from um you know beatniks hanging around in London in the 70s. Yeah, well it actually so originates the subculture as its roots in a small group of stylish young based young uh, men in the 60s who were termed modernists because they listened to modern jazz. So you got Gam and Lee had the correct one here. Unfortunately, Andy was not right. What did Andy say? Japan. <laughs> it's it's in the 80s. Yeah, I said 60s. This is in Soho. Just clubs. Yeah, this is 50s. Oh, 50s. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's 50s, not right. 60s, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you said I don't 60s. know. I don't know. I just I just read the questions, Lee. <laughs> no, sorry, 50s it is. It's the 50s. Okay. All right. Next question is um who was Herbie Hancock's mentor? And I know the answer to this because I watched uh, I was just watching a documentary about him, Miles Davis. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, everybody else got Quincy Jones. So yeah, Miles Davis had Herbie Hancock in the Miles Davis Quartet for a good chunk of his career. 
and took him under his wing and mentored him. I was yeah, close. Absolutely. Well, cool. what did you say, Gab? You were there. I was close. Oh, you were close. <laughs> what did you say, Steve Davis? No, Jack Club, me. Quick question for Owen. Which artist did the work behind him on the window? So that's an Irish artist named Duda right there. So D-U-D-A, you go and check him out. He's a phenomenal artist. And the other two are Dimitri from Paris, the Playboy Mansions albums, just the covers of them in, uh, in frames. Awesome, brother. Awesome. He's an awesome artist. Right, next question. How many Billboard number ones uh, does Elvis Presley have? Closest answer wins. I'm going to say Elvis probably had a, had a lot to sing. So I'm going to say 10. Yeah, so Elvis had seven number ones, 25 top tens, and 109 songs released. That was way out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Gam won the points in this one. Yeah. Very good. Well done, Gam. And next one is, name one leading music artist who has won an Oscar for music. I'm going to say, well, there's quite a few that I know of. Well, Quincy Jones. Yeah, exactly. So Lee and Gam got the correct answer here. Andy, unfortunately, you guessed Madonna. Madonna? Which, yeah, I thought she got it for Evita. No, no? <laughs> no, no, she won it for an acting, not as a, a musician. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so there's a big list of them. John Paul McCartney, Lennon, Eminem, Elton John, Prince, Barbara Streisand, Sinatra, Randy Newman, Cher, Phil Collins, Springsteen, and Annie Lennox. I was going to say all them. <laughs> <laughs> Some great comments come firing in here, by the way. Just, uh, Gam, your smile, so bright, can't open my eyes. <laughs> and, Andy, I love you. Ooh, pa. And, and the other one is, I wash my hand when think of Gam. My hand is melt and goodbye to me. That was from me, sorry. That was poetry, <laughs> emotion. Okay, right, let's fire. We're, we're, we're cutting, we're into, the, we're into extra time here, lads. So I'm going to just fire in with the next uh, question, which is... In 1935, a company introduced several new guitar models, including the Model B electric Spanish guitar, which is the first known solid body electric guitar. What is the name of the guitar company? And the reason I know the answer to this is because I witnessed Gam smash one of these at a at a <laughs> at a gig many years ago, um, a Stone Roses gig, if I would not remember. And um, I was I, I turned around and went, "What the fuck was that guitar?" And they were like, "It was a Rickenbacker." Yeah, yeah so Rickenbacker. Rickenbacker formed in 1931. They had 12 string guitars that were used by the Beatles and wow. Roger McGuinn. They had uh, players including John Fogarty of Creedence Clearwater, John Kay, guys from Metallica, the Pacemakers. It's pretty much an endless list of people who've used their guitars. So, yeah, that's the correct answer. And a good cool of people them. playing along. <laughs> <laughs> <Bye. laughs> Next question Who has won more Grammys, Herbie Hancock or Carlos Santana? I'm going to say Herbie Hancock, just as a guess, stab in the dark. Yeah, well, everybody got the correct answer here. So Herbie Hancock's won 14 Grammys. Carlos wow. Santana's won 10. Wow. wow. Okay. Okay. Next question is El Morocco and Apollo Theater are famous nightclubs of which decade? Um, I have no answer, idea on this, so I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say the 1920s. Yeah, well, you were a decade off. It was the 1930s, so the Apollo Theatre became was the premier showcase for uh, theatrical entertainment in Harlem. And El Morocco was a club that actually had, it was the, basically the template for all nightclubs from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. So they had this first people to ever use velvet rope in a nightclub, and they had this leopard skin print, and there was this guy named Jerome Zerb who used to take photos in the club. And because they had a leopard skin print, he used to sell them to the newspaper and everybody would know what celebrity was in the nightclub. So he's the first ever paparazzi. So any of the people who are following around with cameras, they all go back to this guy called Jerome Zerb in the El Morocco nightclub. Amazing. There you go. There That's you have it. Some amazing. of the quotes, some of the, some of the comments coming in are like, it's, about, it's basically an Andy and Gam loving. Andy, your cuteness <laughs> saved the world. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people crying over Andy and Gem here online on YouTube. Uh, Andy, do you know I love you so much? When you smile, I want to cry because you are so beautiful. The best, one, the best one so far is Andy. Your YouTube is daily oxygen for me. <laughs> That's good, man. I like it. I like it. 
So there's a couple of questions. Again, what is your favorite Beatles song? Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields. And, and there's another yeah. one here. Andy, where did you get the... What, what, what is the sample from Flick of the Finger? Intro sample from where? Flick of the Finger from BDI. Oh, the talking bit. It's, um, it's Tarek Ali, isn't it? Ah. Is it it's the, the words are from Tarek Ali from That's Street right. Fighting Man. That's right, again. Yeah. Again, my name more than me, yeah. And we got um, we got someone to revoice it. We got um, oh, what's his name? Avon. Yeah, the the phone jacker. Phone jacker. Yeah. He did it here. And you're right, right in front of you. <laughs> okay, right, we'll, we'll move on because we're going to get lost in the question. The question spiel. Right, next one is um, I bet you look good on the dance floor. Was the debut hit single by which band? It was the Artec Monkeys, and in two thousand and five. I'm not sure what day or what month it was. Yeah, so you're correct. It's Arctic Monkeys, 23rd of October in 2005. Okay. So we have correct answers from Gem, Lee, and Andy. And Andy got the bonus point because he was one year away from the correct year. Ooh. Cool. Amazing. Amazing. One more question. <laughs> sweet, <we> sweet bonus point. <laughs> sweet bonus point. <laughs> okay. A couple of questions coming in here for... Uh, um, one for Lee. What it, Lee, what does it feel like to be Irish? <laughs> I'll ask me dad after this. <laughs> yeah, what is your favorite tea? Tea, yeah, fish and chips, fish and chips. Also, Gem, <laughs> do you cut your hair yourself? Thank you. No, <laughs> all right, cool. All right, well, let's go on to the final question. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel our lyrics by which artist. And their lyrics from the classic one of I think is his last song, um, "Hurt" by the legendary and late Johnny Cash. Yeah, yeah, Johnny Cash is the right answer there, Arvin. Okay, cool. And that concludes the final question and final round of tonight's episode. So, Owen, without further ado, who is going to be the loser and who's going to be the winner? Who's going to be the lead singer and who's going to be relegated to? I just Rodin. need to check Rodin. one thing because at the moment, hold on, just let me check. Yeah, so, basically. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So oh I'm afraid God. this is pretty crazy. Yeah, this is a it's a three way tie where Whoa. all of have Whoa. five. Wow. We can meet each other, man. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what I'm gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to dip into a vault of questions extraordinaire, wow. and it's basically the first person with the right answer into me is gonna be the winner. Hang on, let me get my phone ready. <laughs> Hang on, I'm already on okay. mode. No, I've got, oh, I've got to dial in. I've got my home phone. <laughs> All right, while, while you guys are so doing here we go. Here we go, Irvine. I think, and we're going to ask you something, so if you've been watching other episodes, you're going to get the answer to this. Daft Punk was playing at whose house? Andy Bell in with the correct answer there. Oh. All, Christine, uh, Christine's just chiped in saying they're all winners, and I agree with that. <laughs> so Andy Bell is the well, winner of tonight's Andy. Decade of Dance Music Quiz. Yeah. Well done, Andy. Yeah. This is good because, because my wife won one of the other episodes, so uh, I get to match you her. You end up either. Well, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, could Andy. End up Hopefully, Andy, you'll, you'll 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 make it to the final win and be able to afford some electricity and light in your house too, because it looks pretty dark there. <laughs> <laughs> we started off before the sun went down. <laughs> now it's gone down. Po poetry in motion. But listen, lads, thanks for taking part tonight, Gam. What's your plan this evening? Are you going to be cooking up a storm in the kitchen, jogging down a jogging down a tornado in the yard, or Sudoku? <laughs> Sudoku. The classic, the classic Sudoku. I love it. I love it, man. Lee Mod, are you going to be getting up to any naughtiness? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go downstairs and mark some English essays. That's what I'm going to do. Make sure that the children are ready for the for, for the forthcoming term. Marvelous. <laughs> well, good, good job, good job, old chap. And uh, yeah. Andy Bell, the winner, the champion of tonight's decade of dance music quiz. I think the I'm going to go out celebrating tonight in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> beans on toast all around i'd say but uh 
Right, listen, thanks everyone for tuning in and for all your comments, questions, shouts to Roisin, Christine, Kath, Shara, and Cooper G, all the different heads from all, from all over the world, South Korea. Thanks for tuning in. You've been watching Decades of Dance. We're going to catch you on Monday where we have a battle of All-Ireland DJs featuring Timmy Stewart, Fish Go Deep, and Get Down Edits. That's Monday, 8 p.m. GMT. Cool. See you then. Good night. Thanks, guys. Bye. Nice one. Bye. Irish Media Network. We entertain.